Good morning everybody, welcome to Mortal Gaming, this is me again, Marvin, and we're now here for another video for Ragnarok Origin. And this time we're going to be talking about my physical damage build on the Doram. I am already enjoying my Doram build. It's easy to build, it's kind of, you know, more on the F2P friendly side. And at the same time, it's easy to adjust from other jobs. So for example, if you came from a mechanic or a rune knight, it's very easy to adjust on this job. And even on the mage side, it's still easy to adjust on this job. Anyway, so let's start with the stats. All right. So the stats here are on two builds so we have physical damage build that is for pve and the pvp damage build so this is for my pvp so we have strength of course on 99 we have vitality on 90 because we need more hp so for survivability and for additional physical attack we need dexterity and luck so dexterity and luck both because luck also gives out physical attack same as dexterity but if you don't have enough dexterity i am already targeting on purchasing the dexterity fruit on the experience shop so if you don't have any plans on purchasing that then you can you know put more on dexterity 100 total dexterity is more than enough for you to hit enemies even on pvp okay so the second build is on pve 99 strength and more on dexterity and luck since we need more physical attack here and both will give us a lot of physical attack then eight on vitality so that i could have zero points left here all right so let's now go to the skills we have again two builds on the skills for physical damage so that's physical damage pve and for pvp let's start first on pve Okay, so on our uh, apprentice side, we have here, it's just, you know, all of the things that you need in order for you to unlock the next tree. So we have here level 10 on soul orb, level 10 hide, level 5 stoop, level 1 on the loop, level 3 on 9 lives, level 5 on bite, level 6 on scratch. That's it. 40 points. Next is on our summoner. We have here, of course, Max on Piki Peck, a Scar of Taru, Power of Life for the passive, level 5 on Ocean Power for that physical damage and magic damage reduction, 3 on Meow Gaze because this is very important, ignore physical defense, level 5 on Protect the Twins, we need this, alright? Next, Night Vision, and I think that's it, level 1 on Power of Land for just, you know, additional int. Next, uh, the Transcendence second job, the Summoner. Okay, so we have level 10 on Carrot Beat. Even on early game, this is the most important skill. This will give you a ton of damage even on below average gears. This is so good. For a Transcendence job, thousands of multiplier is great. Uh, of course, level 10 on Spirit Savage, level 10 on the passive. This will give you more damage on your summons. So one on grooming, three on purring, and you won't be maxing out Tasty Shrimp here. Next on the third job, the Grand Summoner. So we now will be putting Sacrifice of Spirit. Of course, this one is the one that is buffed. Everything else was nerfed on the Taiwan server, but this one got buffed. So this is gonna be so good in terms of AOE big burst damage. And then uh, Rage of Nature and also the Life Spirit Unity because this one increases furthermore the damage of the Rage of Nature. And then last would be the Nine Lives. And most of you would be asking why did I put level 1 on C? vortex we'll be talking about that on the settings okay and the rest would be tasty shrimp party okay so why see vortex okay so in terms of the settings manual settings we have here all of the attacks and of course rage of nature and then for the next rotation we have here level one sea vortex the shrimp and the shield and also the uh, night vision hide and then resurrection okay so 
YC Vortex. So there are some cases wherein the Rage of Nature cannot be used. Even though the skill is already off on cooldown, it still cannot be used because you don't have 100 points on the uh, Doran power. Because when you use all of this, the first rotation would exactly give you 100 Doran power. So for example, like this. Okay. There you go, you get 100. But then, all of this has a 7 second cooldown except for the sacrifice. So, you have already used up again all of your uh, summons here. And this sacrifice skill is still on cooldown. That give, makes you not able to use the Rage of Nature. Now, if you're gonna see on the C Vortex here, it also gives you 20 Doram power. There are times wherein your Doram won't do anything, won't cast anything because the damage has been dealt by all of your summoners. So you can't do anything because everything here is still on cooldown and you cannot use again the Rage of Nature, for example. So just to demonstrate to you guys, alright. So we have here on auto settings all of the attacks and the rage of nature and then we're gonna do the uh, sea of vortex manually by the time that we see our uh, doram not doing anything and most of the skills are still on cooldown okay so let's go there you go we're gonna do all of those there you go and then um we will now be able to uh use uh, the there you go. Now it's our time to cast all of this. There you go. There are times wherein our our Doram is not doing anything. So for example, that time also we have uh, some some leeway for us to cast a uh, Sea Vortex. Then that's the time you cast it. Okay. So right now we are at uh, almost 750 million. There you go, 750 million uh, DPS. Anyway, you can opt to do that. I'm not forcing you to to, to squeeze out uh, the sea of vortex in your in your gears, but yep, it's kind of helpful for us to cycle the rage of nature more frequently. All right. So anyway, let's move on. Let's now go to our uh, PVP skill build. On our PvP skill build, it's the same here on the Apprentice. On to be Summoner, there is quite a difference, okay? I have lessened the skill level of Picky Peck because we will now include the utility part aside from the damage part of the Doram. Put in the skill points on the Catnip Powdering. This one reduces the movement speed of your enemies. And not only that, what we want here is when the physical attack and the magical attack gets reduced by 20%. In my opinion, that is big. Aside from that, another difference is on our summoning skill tree. As you can see now, we have lessened the level on the Tasty Shrimp Party. You can still max this one out. It's still up to you, but we will exchange that with the Nyang Grass. So what is the Nyang Grass? The Nyang Grass reduces the physical and magic damage reduction of your enemies by 20 percent the cooldown is just one second so if you misplaced this nyang grass on one place you can just place it again on the other this is really great on large-scale pvp battles and last we have added the life-saving dried fish because why not you need this one particularly by the time that you see that reading spell book being casted on you just one click of this and that will be nullified you can just get healed again after that okay let's now go to the grand summoner uh skill tree on pvp i now have reduced the nine lives to level four so instead of recovering up to 90 percent when you resurrect a party member it will now be 80 percent which is still good it's not that big of a difference but that one skill point is gonna matter on your pvp since we have so many things to put 
this uh, skill points in this skill tree. So where did that skill point go? This is where it went. So 2% chance of causing enemies to fear when you attack okay so that's gonna be handy at times okay so aside from that we still have a sacrifice of spirit here rage of nature and life spirit unity okay in terms of settings we have a different settings particularly on auto here we will now have on auto the night vision of course next is uh the shield of course there you go now the reduction which is the stoop the reduction of all damage taken this is not physical and magic damage reduction this is strictly damage reduction all red damage reduction okay so of course on large scale pvp the resurrection really matters so all of those supports and the big aoe attacks i've put it here so that when i uh, click on auto sometimes it gives you that attack all right so the lunatic carrot is the one that you should be spamming that's why i put it on auto and also the spirit of savage particularly if you have the core of the savage okay so for the manual we have here the rage of nature on manual and then next would be on the other rotation the hide i have put the hide near the lope so that when i am escaping i would automatically hide after escaping so for example i'm escaping here and then i can now hide afterwards so that's some something that i put so that it would be more convenient for me then catnip powdering is here together with the nyang grass okay two of the irritating aoe's of the doram is here all right and then our life-saving uh, dried fish is this one okay so that i don't get killed that easily okay on the other side are all of the uh, damage skills okay so that is for the skills let's now go to the gears okay for the gears on weapon we have life grilled fish on armor okay people are saying that on armor it should be master of magic or charleston but i have already tested it the tears set is still superior particularly if you have already maxed out your strength on the experience shop the tears set is superior even now when i tested it it was still superior so over even if um when i tested it versus the master of magic i had 9000 uh, sp that time on max tax of the plus 15 of Ma master of magic it still did less damage versus the tears set so i would suggest for you to use tears set for the physical damage for the shield it's either cracked buckler so why not why crack buckler on Crack Buckler, we have additional damage versus Undead, and that's mainly the reason for PvE. <laughs> on some cases, of course, on Dungeons, then you should go for Valkyrie's Shield, or on PvP, Valkyrie's Shield is still better because it covers both physical damage and magic damage next for our accessories of course it should be chaos pendant okay for the gacha most of this would be coming from wishing okay so for the headwear it's either stellar dream hat or this uh, bunny hat but i think the stellar dream hat is still the best all right neutral skill damage this this is a lot eight percent aside from the damage versus medium enemies okay next face wear of course our face wear would be musical note for the mouth wear we have here the ruby gem for the back wear we have here echo of ocean for the costume it's still bunny sheriff because you need now let's go and focus on our cards in terms of our cards of course weapon would still be damage modifiers the size the element and the race modifiers for your armor you could go for picky card in early game then mark card for certain dungeons particularly ton and either dokebi or ghost ring on pvp since you're battling mostly wizards or dorams okay next for the shoes it's gonna be megalith or alarm for the garments jack card versus on pvp on warlocks but Raedric Swordsman is still okay. You can even equip two of the Raedric Swordsman cards. Next, for our accessories, okay, we have here Grove. 
greatest general, I would still suggest Injustice because Injustice card is just so great. All right, so good. Then um, All Baron, I'll be changing the Bone card that I have to All Baron once I have already uh, farmed another one. Now for the headwear, we have here. Uh, the Verucci card as your staple headwear, both for PVE and PvP. That's good. You can uh, you can put G Earth card or Marduk card if you want, or a Cramp card for everyone else. Okay, let's uh, go to the enchants. All right, for our weapon and accessory, of course, Mili Boon with strength substats is the best. For your armor, PVE technique, of course, for PVE and vitality boost for your PVP. Now, for the garment, of course, we have anti magic damage with vitality or luck if you have one. Then, for our shoes, anti physical damage also with strength or luck. Next. For our shield, we have, again, we can go for anti-magic damage or anti-physical damage, if whichever you have on highest. And together with it, either magic defense, physical defense, or luck. For the headwear, for PvE, it's superior physical attack. And for PvP, of course, PvP technique, together with strength. Now, that goes the same with our back wear. For our face wear and mouth wear, PvE technique for PvE and improved magic defense together with lock on PvP. Now, for the costume, it's gonna be PvE technique for PvE and PvP technique for PvP. Alright, let's go back and now look at our course. Okay, I got so lucky on this core, so we got power of life here and holy light shield. So, which one should you be aiming? So, the first thing that you should be aiming is power of life. Even though it gives you less damage because it's just plus 10%, but it's for all summoned. And for all... And but it is for all of your summons so power of life is the best one that's number one the second one is the lunatic power this one gives and extends the damage of the lunatic carrot which is basically your highest dealing damage in terms of you know the lowest cooldown because uh, you know I would see that sacrifice would deal more damage but lunatic power is just you know your bread and butter in terms of damage so lunatic power if you have that one will be very great number three is holy light shield number four is mad savage for your savage uh, summon and last would be the shrimp spirit because this one increases further your physical damage by 10 percent okay Let's now go to the sigils. Okay, for our sigils, of course, we have two builds. The first one is for PvP. The first one is for PvE. In terms of job sigils, you would want the soul shield. You restore 5% HP. You increase also the damage dealt of your party by 4% damage reduction by 10 percent and additional physical attack and magical attack by five percent i think that is the best buff that you could give to your party members okay so this is really good aside from that i do hope that they give out or shell out another third job sigil wherein we will now be concentrating on your summons but until then this is gonna be your job sigil next for your active uh, sigils of course it's gonna be radiant guardian for pvp and uh, you could go for primal on PvE. Now for passive sigils, of course, the, we have here the Starfall, the Meteor, and of course on MVPs, you go for Choice Maze and Immortal Body for everything else. Okay, on the PvP side, Surging Protection, Swift Breakout, or Gate of Suffering. I do believe that Gate of Suffering or Endless Nightmare is the best for PvP since one of the biggest way for you to counter a summoner Doram is for you to just run. Those summon doesn't have that much movement speed. Gate of Suffering and Endless Nightmare is gonna be one of your key sigils, passive sigils. Now let's go to the Nexus engine. Nexus engine is almost the same with the Rune Knight and the mechanics melee damage, ignore physical defense, PvP or PvE damage stats. 
that is for your modules i would love for you to get the induction too because it increases your aoe skill damage now for the special talents we only need two here the wrath of nature and the noble soul for additional damage both on your summons and your soul sacrifice okay so aside from that you could go for undaunted robust so let's now go to the nebula so we also have presets on nebula the pve and the pvp okay so both using the life grand summoner astral sign and we have leveled it up until level 80 which is okay on pvp most of this would be affecting your summons on level 100 i think this is kind of op on pvp on our on our constellations this is what we have on the first uh, orbit we have max out on scutum we have phoenix here of course draco and some on the steel body but the most important thing on pve are this okay hercules okay cygnus and this is one of the big reasons why somehow i love the sea vortex because the sea vortex is the only skill that is elemental on your case now if you're gonna use it then you would go and max out the monoceros because whenever you use the water damage or inflict water damage you additionally inflict 1200 neutral physical damage on the enemy so that is for pve nothing to consider that much here uh you just have to max out the lepus now for pvp we're gonna have a different distribution of your stellar points now for the first orbit phoenix again draco still body auriga scutum those are all maxed now for the second orbit of course lupus again then hercules we are not gonna put fornax here because we're not gonna use any elemental skill so you can leave that one unskilled but uh, the cygnus is still important eculus very important then we have two points on eridanus five on lepus two on hydrus two on mensa okay so for the next orbit we have level 4 both on the physical defense and magic defense. Of course, physical attack here. The Perseus is really important. Of course, again, on uh, reduction on the elemental damage, that you need that. And also, the more damage versus the plate armor. Because you are a cloth armor, then you will deal more damage to the plate armor, which is the Crusader, Knight, and Blacksmith. Ursa Major, only one here since there are still a few uh, that can counter the Doram, which is the the Rangers, okay? Then Canis Major, of course, more max PvP, and then damage reduction when your PvP ward it gets broken. Some points on the reduction versus mechanics, okay? And then more reduction versus wizard doram and rune knights because on our recent guild war most of the enemies are usually this three third jobs all right so i think that's it i do hope that you have learned something from this let me know if you have any inputs we really take all of the inputs because we we don't know everything and sometimes i do make mistakes so that's it thank you everybody for watching if you haven't subscribed to my channel please do subscribe if you haven't to like this video please do leave a like share this to your friends and click that bell notification button so you get notified every time i upload a new video start a new stream or a new content that's it see you again in the next video Bye bye now